the summer is well underway, but you wouldn't know it by the rain that's going on outside my window, buddy. Sideways. Just coming in sideways off horn. Yeah. Above on sight. I just looked at it and I was like, if I put a spirit level on that, it would be absolutely bollocks. It's it's amazing. It's like it's like a Hitchcock movie rain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's it, it doesn't look like it's falling from the sky. It looks like there's just somebody outside my window pouring it out of a watering can. But regardless of all that, hello, everybody. You're very welcome along to the Tom and Jerry show. I'm Jerry McBride. That's Tom O'Mahony over there. Uh, how are you? How are you? Uh, finger update, Jer. Uh, oh, we may as well do it now. It's still, oh, we're, we're down to about 9% of fingernail hanging on the corner. I've cut it back for everything I can. But in fairness, what it's done now is it's, it's proven for great crack cheeks in the young fella around the house with my zombie finger. Much like oh, you. Look at yeah. You. yeah. I told you that. I, I told I, I told you, you when I had you a monkey toe the, or a monkey finger or something. I had the monkey toe, yeah. Yeah. And I was chasing the kids around it. They hated it. Yeah. Every time well, I I I do get him with it and then he immediately turns into a zombie. So it's great. It. It's great. Yeah. It's great. It's proven. I mean, look at that's the child has to learn, Tom. Like, and every now and then you just have to, I don't want to say terrify the kids, but we sat them down, our kids there now, we sat them down today to watch Jurassic Park for the first time. And they were terrified throughout. Good. Good. And no I'm harm. like, there you go. Yeah. The I, told world, you earlier, uh, I told you earlier in another podcast, the kids had never been stung by a nettle. That's it. I'm, know, send, so... I'm sending you up a, a DHL bag of fucking nettles. You, they're coming so, to you. I'm going, and I'm going to at least terrify them with a wee bit of, you know, dinosaurs and whatnot. Yeah. But regardless of which, these are the things we do, Tom, to entertain our kids, ladies and gentlemen of the Tom and Jerry Show audience. If you have kids, you probably entertain them as well. And if you're struggling to entertain them in the summer holidays, well, Jesus, you know what? Our first segment might be for you, Tom. How about we get into the big happening of the week right now in a segment we call the weekly what have you? This is a very complicated case, Maude. You know, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have yous, and uh, a lot of uh, strands to keep in my head, man. Yeah. This is one that hasn't uh, arrived at our door just yet. And uh, now it's you're down to brass tacks and you're like having to be entertained by every drawing that's handed to you. Every, yeah. you know, every Kinex monster that's been made, you have to. So there is no pawning the situation off yet into no. what? I suppose they're the world over the summer camps, aren't they? They must summer be the... camps, Tom. That's what it is. The kids are on summer holidays, and so be it with summer holidays come summer camps. Yeah, and they they come in various guises, of course. The, the two day one, the the one day one, the week long one. You know, like there was the samba soccer in the nineties and all the rest. Yeah, of it. And, cool you know, camps and the whatnot. There's yeah, cool camps, and there's you know, kids do archery and they do yeah, whatever they do, you know what I mean? I don't know. They go on what orienteering, what's treasure hunts and stuff like that, you know. Well, oh, I mean, Tom, I... They, they'll do anything, and I gotta tell you, for a summer camp, okay, uh, you can't leave the kids at home all day by themselves, okay? No, someone is going to call the guards on you, right? That's uh, that's it. Yeah, that's absolutely going to happen. You'd assume it would anyway. Yeah, and you can't go to work. With your parents, not every day. I remember when I was we sometimes I go out with with yeah you know, with, with me old man in the in the uh, in the JCB. We drive around the place and he dig holes and dig foundations and dig whatnots. Well, that's a health. You know, the you can see that you can see yeah. that. And the old JCBs, I don't know how how far back this was, but the old older JCBs used to come with a spare seat, like a little seat in them. Not these ones, Tom. You, uh, sat, you <laughs> sat like the song on the toolbox, did you? Driving along, not with even that. You just kind of you just kind of like held a squat. For yeah. eight hours a day, you said you held like a. I, I believe in um, Korean prisons; they're known as stress positions. <laughs> Asian lads and Slavic lads do love a good uh, squat, though, don't yeah. they? They'll smoke fags like you know. I walked in a, a, a chap who was brilliant, who was a race car uh, builder, uh, an Asian chap over in the Robin Hood estate, no, the JFK estate in Dublin, and he used yeah. to service me out car because he was friends with the brother-in-law. And I walked in there one day, and cars everywhere inside this huge garage. Couldn't see him for love nor money. I'm like, where is, where? And I walked around there and there were six Asian lads all smoking fags, having a chat down on their hunkers. I'm like, how, yeah. boys, how is that comfortable? Mother of God. But that yeah. was, there was their jam and they all chatted to me from, their from squad. the squad. Yeah, from the squad. I'm like, okay, all right. There I'm not go. genetically built to do that, but that's okay. Well, maybe they were doing a, maybe they were doing a squat in summer camp. But regardless <laughs> of which time, you can't, you know, you got to find something for the kids to do in the summer months. You can't park them in front of the TV no. for eight weeks. So we have found ourselves dropping the kids off. As I'm sure maybe you have yourself. Your man might be a wee bit young yet. To various camps. And I'll tell you one thing, just straight out off the bat, Tom. Uh, 
you needn't think you're doing it for convenience, all right? Because we were there like, okay, you know, we have work to do. We have bits and pieces to do. But that would be fine because we'll drop the kids to a summer camp. Yeah. But they don't teleport, Tom. That technology does not exist yet. No. So you find yourself at 10 o'clock of the day having to drive them out to, you know, some industrial estate to drop them off to do archery in a converted garage or whatever the hell it might be. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah, go yeah. back at three o'clock to get them again. And I'm all of a sudden it's like, I've made work for myself. I have made work for myself. But I mean, the 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 name camp is a bit misleading if that is the scenario. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's no camping going on. It's just a class. Oh, no. It's just a class that they're on. Like yeah. for people too, I mean, there's the American notion, like, you know, you send them off to Champ Chimpajunga, you know, and yes. they're gone for six weeks and they learn about shifting and, you know, canoeing. You know, Camp in Crystal L- Lake, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally named after some Native American ripoff sounding yes. thing, like with logs and totem poles. And I can I can see that being like an absolute thing uh, for American parents that want to, you know, they have mom and pop both have jobs, have got shit to do, the kids are Jerry, off school. My wife used to manage a couple of shops, these tourist shops in Dublin. The amount of parents from America that were holidaying and they were like, uh, oh my God, and our kids, and you go, and where are they? Oh, we parked them in a camp for six weeks. <laughs> and now if you're going to do it, do it right. That's like drop them off for six weeks, not this crack of uh, driving, doing, and and, and, and and I've got two kid, kids, Tom, and there were weeks there that they were going to two separate camps, so we were I double hear. dropping and doing double pickups. Like I was like, wonderful, I've just doubled my taxi load, but the kids loved it, and that's the main thing, he said with a grimace. Um but a true camp in Ireland, a true kind of our version of champ, Camp Sinkiwanga, a true version is yeah. the month long, the, tw- the 28 days long um, trip to a western, most likely coastal area of Ireland from anywhere yes. from Donegal, Mayo, Galway. I don't think, does Clare have one? I know Kerry has loads of Gael Talks. Yeah. And then there's a couple in Waterford. There's one in Waterford anyway, for sure. And there's a few in Cork because I attended the one in Cork. Yes. Um, where you go and for... I attended one in Donegal. Did you go to Donegal? I did. How did you fare with that, Irish? Well, let's 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 get into it, Tom, because yeah. I got to tell you, um, the Gaeltuck is the closest we have in this country, or it was when we were coming up anyway, to a classic sleepaway camp where you yeah. went away for four weeks. Yes. And your parents had you out of the house for four weeks. I'd never been out of the house for four days. I don't think I've been out of the house, you know, more than a weekend at a cousin's no. or an aunt's house or something such like that. On my own, 15 in Donegal, you were probably about the same age, right? Yeah. About no, the I was same about age. 14, sorry, 14, because 15 yeah. was doing the junior cert. I couldn't figure and, out uh, how, yeah, how I was. Yeah, and then, you, you know, let's see how this goes, Tom. Well, I first and foremost, I had the most outfilla outlook of all time. The parents asked me if I wanted to do it and I went, eh. but um, <laughs> my biggest problem, Jared, was having to having to, to stop working. <laughs> it, I mean, this is it. This was costing you money, Tom. It was costing me money to go to this place. And I, I actually got, what it was is the parents weren't that, you know, fluhulach with money or whatever, but what I got offered a scholarship through sports to right. go. And it wasn't GA. Oddly, it was martial arts. They went, well, we don't have any martial artists being sent from the greater Tipperary area. Could we have one? And they put me forward because I was kind of quite high ranking for my age. And they went, all right, let's, I'm not really digging it. I'm not into Because for anybody from outside Ireland who's going, what is a Gwautok? Which what I doubt most, most of our Tom? listeners will not have that accent. But the rules are simple. It has not changed in a long time. You're no. only allowed to speak Irish. That's it. It's a bunch of you all running around as mad as lorries, uh, emotions and all sorts of testosterone and estrogen bursting out, puberty bursting out through the top of your head. The the games are limited. It's, I, I did, by the way, Jerry, I, they asked me to do zero martial arts whatsoever while I was Oh there. yeah, no, no. But it was, uh, you play, you play Gaelic sports and yes. uh, that's about it, really, as far as I can remember. Oh, well, was, no, you're, you're, there was a bit you're, of swimming. You're, you're... There was a fair bit of swimming. I yeah, and her. and don't discount the uh, sheer amount of Irish dancing that we at least in Donegal. Oh yeah, no, the Kaylee was every single evening. Work, yeah, work taken through. and just oodles of sandwiches. Um, yeah, the way the, the way the, the way it landed is the boys were all in dorms on site, and the girls seemed to be all in okay. in houses in, and you would be under 
a hard nosed woman called the Ban on T, which would be yes, the, woman the woman of the, of the house. house. Yes. That's um, what I was going to that's what I was going to say because uh I I I don't know what it was. Maybe it wasn't a blanket Gale Talk rule, but the one that we were at certainly had no dormitories. So it wasn't like a sleepaway camp or a boarding school or anything like that. Yeah. Although I understand there are some Gale Talks that do that. Yeah. Uh the one we had was like the the, the houses in the locality would take, you know, one house would put the hand up and say, I'll take six boys. And then another house would put the hand up and say, I've got an extra room upstairs. I'll take eight girls and so on and so forth and so yeah. backwards. And pretty much every house in the location, in the locality would, would have kids in it. And that was their summer long and they got handsomely paid for it. And that was, I dare say, it turned a lot of wheels in Donegal. I would imagine so. I went down to Ballingiri, is the name of the area, in West nice. Cork. Nice spot. But they had the, the dormitories. They had... Right, okay. Uh, but, do you know what happens very quickly, Jara? And this is this is I'm sure true with every scenario. Is no matter whether it's Shawshank Redemption, Lord of the Flies, everything goes feral once you put a bunch of lads. Oh yeah, no, forget what, about everything it. goes feral. Yeah. Like we weren't there three minutes. One rule of the roost had to be established. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And then scraps had to happen. Next thing you know, you've got your shirt off and you've got your face painted and you've got a spear and you've got the, all the adults, you know, tied up. And, no, OK, we didn't go that far. But, well, you, you know, know, you find out a lot like, you know, like I say, this was at my first time out of the house and it was the first time finding out that the world maybe not isn't a, is, isn't a kind and friendly place. And that's a hard thing to find out, ask Ilga, because we were in a house and I'm looking at it, it's 30 years after the fact. I'm not protecting anybody with a bunch of lads from Kells. They fucking robbed us. Oh, yeah. All the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they robbed every penny. I did okay. I only had like a, a five or five or six pounds robbed off me at the time, which like, you know, you brought 50 to do you for the month. Like, this is the kind of thing yeah. you're doing. Yeah. But I know other lads that were with us were just cleaned out altogether and fingers were pointed at the end of the day. Anybody know who's doing it? Yeah, everybody fucking knows who's doing it. But like, obviously you couldn't squeal because then you were a squealer. Yeah, yeah. we had, So you uh... just put up with it. I was like, all right, okay. The stealing started early doors, but it ended early doors. Um, and it was a Dublin ad. He'd stolen off a few people. And he, yeah. it turns out he'd put on a great, you know, kind of a, you know, you know yeah, oh, accent. I've seen some Academy but Award performance. It was done. rubbish. He, it turns out he was, you know, proper D forehead of a lad. Like, you know, he had the vest of gear and everything. But um, he he, I, he squared up to me and because I accused him. I said, it was you. I saw you. I saw you. Yeah. And. It was to be fair. It, it ended how you would hope it ended. I kicked seven shades of shit out of him up and down the dorm, and uh, the lads just rifled through his back and took all their money back. And took all their money back. Took all their money back, and that was the end of that. But it, a lot of practical jokes, like lads, heaven forbid, if you fell asleep first, you know you were going to get, a, you know, a face of toothpaste, like and. The 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 the, the moon tours the the teachers took it so seriously the next day when somebody was reported I remember one guy coming up he was like a young teacher maybe twenty one or twenty two yeah. <laughs> it sticks in my memory this lad had toothpaste stuck all over him <laughs> and the man comes up and he goes hmm yeah we'll have to get to the bottom of this boys this is no good <laughs> and I swear on my life he stuck his finger onto the lad's forehead and then. Licked it like you know you'd see old school cops yeah. licking cocaine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he licked him. Mm. Mm. Bicarbonate of soda, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Even at fourteen or fifteen, I'm looking at this going, "Is anybody else seeing this bullshit? How are you all taking this so seriously?" But it, like, it was. I then, do you know what's mad? I'd say it's the the rule of the world over. Like when you're just a complete wet claw to the face because you've no idea what this is like. No. And there was people there that, that had gone in groups and they knew each other. And, it, and for me, it seemed like they were all best friends. I was there for the first two days and I hated it. I mean, oh. I now I, I wasn't going ringing home crying to mammy either, but I was like, this is going to be one bastard of a month. Yeah, hell But then, then you realise, oh wait, there's loads of other people who are in the exact same. You know, yeah. almost everybody actually is there and hasn't brought a group of friends with them. It just seems like one or two are friendly and it, though at first it's like the whole place is best friends and this is shit but as it transpired it was all right it was all right now I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you a couple of things Sam we really just it, it, this went from being a discussion about Gale Talks in general to being like a real sort of therapy session about how we made it through a month <laughs> and Tom I'm all right with that and I hope the listeners of the Tom and Jerry show are all right with that as well I went into the Gale Talk to 14 Tom a wee roundy by right 
a wee tubby fella, right? Lovely yeah. sweets. And I've been a wee tubby child like all my life, right? I'm going to tell you now, a month of walking. Yeah, walking. Up the mountain. Walking, yeah. In Donegal. Air, air house, the, 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 the chalk that we were in. Easily two miles away from the school that we had to go to every Up a day. hill. Up a hill. Straight up a hill, right? Straight up a mountain. So you're talking and you went to it. You went to it twice a day, early yeah. morning classes and later in the evening, right? So you're talking straight away. That's 10 mile. Okay. Yeah. There and back again. Right. And you're just being fed what you're being fed in the, in the, in the house. And you have your 50 pound moro ration money. Yeah. 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 That might get you, uh, you know, whatever it was. You had to ration it out for the, for the thing. It wasn't that you were eating burger and chip all day. Right. Not mm-hmm. only that, then. Every evening you'd have to go to a Cayley, which was about four mile up a goddamn mountain. And that was a mountain, Tom, right? You go up there and do Cayley dancing for two straight hours and straight. Tom, I was like, I came back from that place just shredded. <laughs> just Bruce Lee. <laughs> just, just like huge calves, huge ties. Just like genuinely Robert. was the, the, the making of me fitness wise. Jesus Christ. Yeah, we, I, you just said it there to the, the the walking there was a thing that was going around at the time because there's all these trends you know of stupidity when you're a child or whatever like hey I'm, and you know these urban myths yeah there was, there was one guy there I don't know what he was doing there. I I think he just this tall guy with a beard and, he, and his nickname he had self-imposed his own nickname of Hitler on himself because yes. he was a meth I mean you know but like turns out the guy was just a 16 17 year old who was shouldn't really have been there but he was there and his parents were actually quite posh, apparently. And, it, you it know, is. and this is the whole persona he took on. But there was this thing, you know, you heard, he once killed a dog with his bare hands. No, he, you know, no, no, he, he didn't. didn't. No, he didn't. Mm. Guarantee you, he's in finance right now. You yeah. know what I mean? But there was this there was this thing that going around called the, uh, did you ever hear of called the American Dream? I was just, uh, funny you mentioned that, Tom. I was just talking about this the other day. And we couldn't have, we didn't have a name on it. Yeah. Everybody had a different name on it. But this would be. The fainting game. The fainting game. The yes. fainting game. And I don't have much more on the Grail Talk other than this. This is all I remember was that uh, they, nobody seen. I don't know what kind of short ass rib cage I had, but nobody seemed to be able to do it to me. Right. But I, I could do it to loads of people. Yes. Anybody who wanted it. So t- I, t- take, the, take the people through it, Tom, just for anybody that's not familiar with the fainting so the, game. This I, is how I, fucking dear life was for us I back in the day. Yeah. Tom. And this was, this was, this was what, you know, Minecraft <laughs> You yeah, I mean? exactly. This, yeah, yeah. This all is Roblox was, was just seeing Roblox could you, in the nineties. Yeah, could you get somebody else to faint to pass out? Lethal when you think oh, about I, it. Like, so I can't remember the actual build up to it, but you the the the, the whole idea was you'd stand with your back to a wall, kind of yes. arms arms up to open up your rib cage, your rib box. Yes, and the other person would take the two heels of their palms and drive them up underneath your rib cage. I don't know if you did it a bunch of movements. I can't remember. Did they have we, to breathe? The way we breathe did it very was you'd start, from a, you'd start from a squat position yes, like you're a man sorry, the mechanic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And you'd take a load of deep breaths sort of like, so, like until you feel faint. Like, you know the way if you breathe yeah. in sharpish and then you stand up and someone comes along and, 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 and pushes, pushes your rib cage. Like, uh, like they're trying to push it against the wall. Yeah. And, uh, and you pass out. Yeah. And that was it. That was it. That was it. And people would wake up with a medium high from it kind of going yeah man and I don't know how much yeah man there was in it but yeah, it I, wouldn't be a whole pile it would just be like I fell asleep and had I I, I yeah I got I, I got knocked out yeah and I, I nobody seemed to be able to do it to me I don't know did they just know what but I did it to many many people for them or whatever and it was just yeah. this was our level of entertainment but the only thing was you think to yourself, it's almost like the holidays, you know, you go on holidays and you meet a couple and you're like, and you get on well with them. You're like, yeah, and, but then you get back to the real world and you're like, we are never, you know. Oh, yeah. It was the same thing. It was like best friends forever with some of the people. You know what I mean? You get off that bus back home, wipe that shit from the memory <laughs> back to work. The, the, like I, even the lads from Kells that robbed us uphill and down Dale, I forget their names now. There's only one lad out of the whole thing that I remember his name. Uh, and I check every now and then to see that he show up on Facebook because he had a real, like, you know, a, a name combination that you don't meet every second day, if yes. you know what I mean. Right, he wasn't John Smith. Yeah, Ferdinand Wolf. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, every now and then I'll just see did he show up on LinkedIn or whatever. And he hasn't, so God knows if he fell off the face of the earth or, or what not. A pseudonym while he was there because he was planning on fucking robbing everybody, the bastard. The one thing we're going to leave everybody with now, Tom, about the Gale Talk, and indeed any of these camps uh, as young people, this is, this, is, this, is the, this is the one thing I will say. This is where you had your first shift. Oh, or shift. early doors at least. Shift. Or this was dry humping. This was, this was this many man's yeah. and ladies' yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first experience with uh, any sort of rooting. Petting. Yeah, any sort of rooting you could get. Even God knows at... what they're doing these days, Tom. We were just like, oh yeah, we got the shift back then. So Christ knows what they're at today. Today's youth. The only thing I'd say is that CCTV has really, you know, come on and leaps and bounds. Like there's, I would imagine the amount of security around scenarios now, but there's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be a, a voon tour at a Goyle talk now. I wouldn't be because you're going to have people identifying as lampposts. You're going to have kids who have gluten problems. You, you, like, I don't remember somebody with, lads' heads just swelled if they had a bit of an allergy. And sure, they, you got on with it, like, you know, but like the, the amount the, of the, loops, the amount of times you could be sued in that scenario right now, like, they could. your parents could have sued for them sending you back different than when you left. Do you know what I mean? You well, came we, sent, back we sent one kid back with a shaved head, and I don't know how we didn't get sued on that one. <laughs> but yeah. regardless of that, I do want to say one thing about my trip to the Gale Tucked, uh 1994, I want to say, maybe. I don't know. When did Kirk Cobain die and count forward a year or two? Uh, I fell in with this lady. And God, she was lovely. But like we had a real sort of pally, sort of palliness, like, you know, throughout the whole three weeks of it, right? Yeah. And like she was older as well. Like, she was in fourth year and I was in oh, second year, which to me that was just like not a thing. That's that's I was like, no, you can't. That's that's clearly just like a jokey jokey sort of a thing. Yeah. Uh and the last night came on along and I went off with some lassie. And she was like real sore with me and our the 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 original girl that I've been pals with the whole time. And our, our friend said to me, like, you know, why did you do that? Did you not know that she was like, you know, after you the whole time? For three, four weeks, like, but, you know. And I was like, no, we were just sort of chatty. We were just pals. She goes, no, 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 that's that's not the way. And 40 years later, Tom, 30 years later, I still feel bad about that. Yeah, but you know what? You took learnings from that, Jer. You went, oh. I'd like I'd like to think, Tom, no. The, no, you know, for, no, for, you for a good 10 to 15 years after that, Tom, no. I, 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 you know, there have been young ladies, believe it or not, that might have cast a right my way. And I'd be like, wait, that's you. Good luck now. And then go wandering off. So there's how did you do last night? I got nothing. Well, what about that one that was talking to you for an hour? There's, there's oh God, horror. No, I don't know. I don't know what happened to her, horror. There's a there's a smattering of women around the country who still to this day went. I was trying to date this guy. Turns out he was gay. I don't know what it was. He was just he just would not spot any of my advances. I don't know what's going around with this dude. He was, but you know, good power to him. I hope him and his husband are great. Are doing yeah. well. Yeah. It it was like that. Only I was like, no, no. I'm just I'm just waiting around for some fucking strange lassie that I never met before. Despite there only being a hundred of us here for three weeks, just to show up on the last day. Hey, and you, I'm just going to ignore you and, so the, and bugger off. The overall, so, the, the the overall purpose of a camp in America is to you know to bring kids out of themselves. Then they of course have discipline camps. You know, like boot camps for youngsters yes. that have gone mad, and they have fat camps for kids that have gone fat. The Grail talk is to. I don't know what it is other than to maybe increase your Irishness. And did you increase your Irishness, Jared? Did you come away a better Gael Gore after the Gael um, talked? I absolutely increased my Irishness, but not in the way they would have intended. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it would have been a case of, and you might be the same as well, that we'll send them to the Gael talked and they'll learn a bit more Irish and they'll learn a bit more heritage and they'll take that forward. But no, I became more Irish. I became more bitter. I became like less of a fan of people from Kells. Uh, that's standard. That's standard. And I became rougher and tougher. Yeah. 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 And I mean, probably daily discussions about the weather were probably only started around then. And now it's, you know, it's par for the course. Yeah. That's it. How did you, how did you, did you feel yourself uh, getting any more Irish coming out of, uh, out of Cork? I knew damn well that there was a good reason why my parents had never sent me to dancing. And I knew by the end of it that uh, they were 100% fucking right. I had no business anywhere near that, that carry on. I, I hated it. I was like, this is, this is rubbish. I cannot get him on, get on board with this. I had about seven more extra words. Uh, other than that, I lost a heap of money by not working for that month. So that's, I was kind of, I was happy that it happened, but I 
bullying overall. Do you know what I mean? There you go, Tom. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. The Gale Talk. Are any of your kids at the Gale Talk? Ladies and gentlemen, let us know in the comments. Are you yourself at the Gale Talk? If you are, what the hell are you doing listening to our podcast? This is for real, boys. Uh, but let us know as well. And actually, find, actually, no, block yourself, to be honest. Yeah, with you. yeah no, go. I'm kind of, uh, young people. No, Unless go. you're a teacher at the, at the, the Gale Talk, and you're probably still too young for this podcast, but even still. Yeah, that's, that's us... got... That's got sting written all over it now. Yeah, so true enough. Yeah. yeah. Operation <laughs> U tree just no no, stay away from the, the two guys podcast. You've no yep, business. That's here. it. No, we're just over here. I don't, don't think jokes. they got this far, Jer. To be honest with you, I don't think they got this far. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless of which, we're gonna rock and roll. We're gonna stay with the Irishness for our next segment, Tom, because we have that guys to pick from, as the regular listeners will know. This next segment is about the person that stands above and beyond the rest of people during the week. The person, when you're talking about them, you don't just say, oh, yeah, you know, sure, yeah, yeah, there's this lad and that lad and that lad. No, no. Every now and then, there's this lad. Now there's that guy. Oh, my God. We have this lads. And we, we again... We're kicking this lads out of the way this week, so we are. But, like, we we we, Jeez, we focused we on one. We had to pick one, so we're yeah. going to pick one. We had to. Of course, it is... Um, We've been skirting around... Again, another thing we've been skirting around... The Olympics. I like to pronounce it with D apostrophe O L L. Olympics. Yeah. The Olympics. Well, the- no, Tom, we had to we had to wait to make sure we were going to win something and not make sure of ourselves. So we're giving it the big I am a week ago that what all we were going to do it- and then do nothing. I know, I know, and that was the that was the kind of fear. It was like, oh Jesus Christ, please. We we want to talk about the Olympics, but give us somebody, give us yeah. somebody, and jeez, we've gotten a few honorable mention oh, right. to the few that that, but we won't we won't get into the few because we we kind of done it in the past before. We have. For the first time ever. And I, to be honest with you, this sport absolutely passed me by. I don't. I, I didn't, I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. We'll I, get into it. We'll get into it now. It's not, it's not laser radial or anything like that. This week's This Lad is Ireland's first ever Olympic gymnast, Tom. Reese McLanahan. Reese. I mean, hats off to the boy. Like when, when nobody has laid the track before you, we always done well with the horses. Yes. We've done well with the rowan. Yes. We've done well with the swimming. Do you know? In terms, our, terms and conditions apply, Tom, yes. Uh, no good. <laughs> a win's a win if you ask me. Do you know? It's, you know, it's all figurative after that. But it's, we've done well at the swimming. We've you, always we've been... done well at the swimming just because that lady got her urine tested after the fact and it found there was a nagging of whiskey poured into it. She could have just had a hard one the night before, Tom. We've all been there. But the... And the boxing. We've always been... Yes. You know, we've we've we have held our own. We've we've probably punched above our weight for the want of a better phrase, but we have there in a box, and we've always been good at the boxing. But because here's the thing, Jer, you look at where you grew up, where you are now. You look out. There's no you no distance to get to a boxing club. You'll find a horse anywhere. There's two of the bastards over yeah. that hedge. There's water to row in. You'll see canoes on cars. You know what I mean? Yes. You know, I have a nephew who rows. Like, it's not it's, right there. Yeah. It's it's not that that bizarre. Um, swimming. We, Jesus, there's a pool in every town, right? But gymnastics, by Jesus, like it's almost up there. It's not as wild as f- would say fencing. You know what I mean? And by fencing, right. I don't mean. Although, I can I tell you a quick one? This will tell you. Oh, I, uh, this will yeah. tell you the, the the difference in rare and right. We were walking through Dublin city centre one day, myself and my wife, and there was this wrought iron fence. New but wrought iron, nicely made new wrought iron fence wrapped around this house up near uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral and a little sign on it saying, uh, let's say McBride's fencing, you know, right. just, okay. out of pride and place, it's a nice little plaque on it saying, oh, uh, and she went, oh, just blinked in her head. She went, and it was such a good plaque. It looked like it was part, you know, the, it was the home offices of this building right. and maybe it was, of maybe that was McBride's fencing and her immediate mind went, it's a very small building for a fencing club. I went, what? And she went, no, sorry, 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 sorry. That's but it, that's when the uh, that's when the perfect strangers theme song starts playing in your head, Tom. Literally, because yeah. her brother <laughs> fenced, but like, if you handed him a mallet or a, or a and a couple of posts, he'd fucking eat them before he'd know what to do with the things. Like, so again, but um, but, but yeah, I mean, like, here's aspects. the thing, Tom. There's what we can do and what we can't do, and yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Like, do you know, the, 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 we had a couple of swimming medals there as well, and we dare I dare say by the time you people listen to this podcast, we might have done all right in the boxing as well, terms and conditions. 
a play there. Uh, I, 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 we're going well in the box, and then hopefully and we did well we'll with the with, with the boys uh, rowing again. So we, yes. we've done well. Um, so we're doing well, but we're we're fe- we're featuring young uh, young Reese here now because he is the first person to ever uh, win gymnastics, and he won it on the pommel horse. As Tom said there now, I've never seen a pommel horse in real life, Tom. I saw one. Would you believe it? And we had a, we had very lucky. We were in partnership. Our school was in partnership with a local. When I say local, it was literally across the field, a local uh, sports complex. So we had right. huge sporting facilities. But I remember I was going in for you know the bag of balls or whatever we were doing yeah. one day, and we were like, "Hi, hey, Manny, go in and get them bag of balls." In I go, and there was a pommel horse way down the back. And this thing right. looked like the last fella up in it had a curly moustache and a stripy bathing suit kind of a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And brill creamed, you know, center, center parting. It was like, yeah. what, what? Hello, Petty. Here we are with the pommel horse. It will strengthen your bones and, you know, and that would, yeah. that's how old the elixir shit for looked. life. You know, it looked old as shit. I was like, what, what, how was that thing? Can we have that? It was like, no. It's full of horse hair and stuff, and it'll probably kill you. It's probably made of asbestos, Tom. You it's can't. made of asbestos. Yeah, in our can. school, in our secondary school, and it was like a, it was one of the things that made me pick that school out of the two that were open to me in Carrick Cross at the time. When they gave you the tour of it, they gave you the tour of the gym, and it was like a basketball court, but it had gymnastics equipment in it. Oh, like, and in the five years I was at that school, they never let us use it. They never no. took it out. I, I dare say it was a uh, um like an insurance thing. Or maybe they just knew we were wee gums and all we wanted to do was swing on the ropes. So they never let us do it, Tom. Never no. let us do it. No. no. So that this again, Reese, you found a school that would train you in gymnastics and you stuck at it. Well, here's the thing. When I started going, I wonder where Reese went to school and it it, it was in County Down, Jer. Oh in I... County Down. And that's maybe where you'd find a good Gymnastics program. I gotta tell you, up the uh, up the north, or maybe in uh, maybe it's something they came across from uh, some Dublin schools, the the disputed territories. So maybe it's something they came across from Great Britain, from the mainland, as they would say, as some might say, Tom. Well, Reese wouldn't, given that he signed for the green and white and gold, like you know what I mean. True, yes, but like he 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 uh, he earned his skills on Her Majesty's pommel horse. (laughs) Oh Jesus Christ, Jared, this is. Ah, uh, this is this, this, we're supposed to be a good crack pies podcast. It looks like we're are we a sectarian movement now? Is that's what happened? Well, I'm just saying, no, I'm <laughs> saying he worked out, I'm just saying fair play to him. Like, you know, he 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 learned his moves under the Queen's shilling and then he came down and won a gold for Ireland. Good Reece, man, yeah, actually, yeah, that's even better. That's even no better. No notes, pal. You know, yeah. perfect. <laughs> nice. Can't build on that, all right. Uh have you thoughts on the matter? Let us know in the comments. Uh Tom, here's what it is, right? I've never been on a pommel horse in my life. Yeah. Okay. And I can't fight the feeling that I would have been really good. Do you know what? Now, be, after I came home from the Gale Talk, not before I went when I was a wee, a wee tub. Ah, yeah. But when yeah, I came yeah. home and I was like strong and lean from fighting uh, munchies the whole time. And I don't know, I didn't fight any of the munchies. They were the local, the local hardy lads. Oh, were they? Don't, right. Yeah, don't fight the munchies. <laughs> No. Well, clearly you didn't fight. You fought the munchies because you came back super skinny. So, you know. You oh, I talk to... a good game about fighting the munchies, but I did not fight the munchies. The, um... well, they would kill you. Regardless of which. Uh, I, I, I always thought the pommel the same horse. Thing. Yeah. Just. Yeah. And, and that's not me saying now, Tom, that, oh, yeah, no, sure. That's not hard. Anybody could do that. No. Do you see the thing with the rings where you do the rings and you yeah. hold the rings? And you... No. Forget Go shoulder up two seconds. Rip out yeah. of me. Shoulders like. Richter and total recall. It's just just arms gone. Um, great, the, the running, great reference, by the right? Way. Yeah, be at the party, right? Um, the the running and 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 hitting the vault and doing the somersaults. No, forget about it. Shattered yeah. knees. were hundred percent going to blow out a knee, shin, a whole lot. Yeah, and I understand. Maybe it's just the ladies that do the balance beam where they do tumble the wildcat. No, lads like, do that. Lads, oh, do the lads the do as beam. well. And I look just look up look it up on Instagram, Ultimate Fields on a balance beam for, and it, it's yeah. all the lads and it's all the hookery nut crunch. Every single one is just like swing, 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 bang, crack, bang. two nuts down side of it. And that's that terrified me. I went that no, no. No. So balance no, no. beam, vaults, rings, parallel bars, any of that, no, no, no. I would that, that's instant death for me. Yeah. But the pommel horse, Tom. Uh 
I dare say if I had been let at it back in the day, I might have been all right at that. I think, I wonder the more lads, I think we're kind of built similar in that we kind of be stocky build and that's possibly what you need. I think a real light fella might choose something different. But yeah. I think if you're kind of stocky built, for me in my head, I was like, I'd leapt over loads of fences and done a bit of a spin as well while I'm yeah. doing it for the crack. So I feel it, it was always, it was in there. I don't know how I'd do with the tighty trousers things, you know what I mean, where they actually... I'd make it work, Tom. Yeah, no, you would. You would, in fairness. But it, 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 it just, there's no socks, there's no holes in the inch, or there's not. That's the no, one no, thing. No. It always stuck out to me. It was like, should, what's the man doing in trousers at all? Should live him in a pair of shorts? Like, what's this fucking thing about? Like, but hey. ha, I wonder what the injury, you know, every sport has its injuries. No matter what, if it's chess, you'll get an injury at something. What's the yeah. injury from Pommel Horse? Like, it's not going to be, it's not going to be the bollocks. Because you're always swinging your grind away from the thing. Yeah. Ha, but, you're probably going to do whack your, f- like one arm is going to give way and I reckon the funny bone gets clattered some amount. You know, just dropping down on one elbow. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'd say the, sm- the face has hit the, f- the horse a few times. Do you know what I mean? As well as that, like... Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say now it might be, um, what's in your shoulder? Rotator cuff? That's a thing, yeah, right? Rotor- yeah, 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 yeah. Rotary. Joints as well, yeah, you'd probably yeah. fuck that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the waist down, you'd be all right now. And, and, and here's the thing as well, Tom, not for nothing with the pommel horse. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you've seen all the fails for the balance beam yeah. and for the rings and all this kind of crack. You are going to fall off a pommel horse. And indeed, the story of young Reese there as well was, I believe that in the last Olympics, which was in Tokyo, I want to say, yeah. he, he was close to a medal, but he dismounted ungracefully or got knocked know, off yeah. or fell off or whatnot. Or tackled, I don't know. Uh, and fell off and lost the medals on account of it. So it does happen. But it's nothing you're not just going to shrug and walk away from, unless I'm being very flippant about it. Maybe you do like face plant on Grizzly. Maybe there'd be boys killed off these pommel horses, but I doubt it. The only way I could, yeah, I mean, I'm not seeing it. it. It's kind of be. It's one of those old school ones that hasn't. I guess the moves are so fine that we pro- we're not. We don't know what we're looking at. We're going. No, I true. don't know how you score we don't these know things what, at all. Yeah. We don't know what we're looking at. We're going. Oh Jesus Christ! He pulled off the three CC Merlin there. You're like, oh, did he? Yeah, well, maybe. but. You would see the other ones have really changed. You know, in the nineteen seventies Olympics. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well done, that man! Absolutely, he he just landed, and you're the gold medal. You're like really now. You're looking at people, and they literally look like bionic something that you know Boston mechanics couldn't be made. done. Like you, could, yeah. you're going. This looks you look superhuman doing what you're doing, but I wonder will the pommel horse get to a point where they're like we'll put the fucker on springs? Oh so yeah. See how you deal with that. Like, where does the pommel horse go from here? You know, what what ups the game for the pommel horse? Where there's only maybe one handle. Like, it's a, what it's, are we going to do? It's the kind of thing, Tom, I hate, I, I hate to say we've only got one trick to our pony, but you'd yeah. have to light it on fire, wouldn't you? You'd ha- You're 100% right. Where What does a fella do with the skills of pommel horsing? Do you know? Oh, I mean, no, there's, if you he were does a tumbler across, across the oak, you could look at pro wrestling at some stage. You could be the next Rey Mysterio, like, you know what I mean? But do what you know what you'd be, like, Tom? If you're, a, if you're good at the pommel horse, here's what you do. You um you vault walls and everyone says you're cool. So you don't if you walk up to somebody's house instead of walking through the gap into the driveway, you just put one hand on the wall and just throw your legs over it like oh god class. Like, so but cool. at the same time like, he would so class. Yeah, but he would be class. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Class. Like there's no. I don't know that you're going to earn a living doing that one particular thing. Hey, do you know what I mean? An but I've image, lost money doing less, Tom. Image is everything, Jer. Like if you if he walks up and he's selling you something like. You know, once you just change your your energy provider, but he flips over your gate. You oh yeah, what? no. If, if he if he if he lands up and he says, "Okay, I want to talk to you now about switching your broadband," and while he does it, he's just on the pier doing pirouettes. I'll be like, yeah. "All right, yeah, go on, yeah, yeah, yeah." Can we talk? Can I talk to you about the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? You're like, what? "Yeah, yeah, you can actually." Why In that position, that? you absolutely yeah. can, son. Yeah, go on, let's hear it. <laughs> there you go. Well, Rhys McLennan, we hope you enjoyed your uh, Olympic. Glory before two gums who can't stand up. Oh God! Out. We can only apologise, Reese. If you do end up hearing this or anybody belonging to, me. hey, if you can please explain a bit more, maybe give us a couple of the moves from the pommel horse. Uh, did you have a pommel horse in your school? Were you allowed on it? But I'd love to. I'd love we got some info on it, Jer, because I'm looking at. And I don't. I again, it's like I don't know what I'm looking at. I'd love to and, know uh, now, especially because you know when Wimbledon comes on, like we've never had a tennis champion, but pe- kids go out and they play tennis. You know, out in the yard or whatever. If you're yeah. lucky enough to have a tarmac yard, do you know when you know 
uh, when the racing comes on, people start talking about horse racing. When the, the World Cup comes on, kids are kicking footballs and stuff. When the pommel horse comes on, what's happening? Like, like yeah, walk are, me through it. You know, tell us. I will what, say. I will say one thing, Tom. Uh, I will say one thing. This is the last thing I'm going to say on the subject. Okay, young Reese got up and he done his thing and he was in first place and there was five people to come after him, right? So he was going to, uh, after the first two, you knew he was going to get a medal. Yes, right. Yeah, and then yeah, there was yeah. another two and it was like, okay, this last fella is the only fella that can knock him off gold. Okay, so he's going to go home with a medal one way or another. He's in gold position right now. This last lad... He's, he's the last lad that can possibly beat him. And the last lad get up to do his spinning for his medal. And he fell off halfway through it. Do you know what that is? I'm That's... not proud of this, Tom. But I went, yeah. Yeah, and no, 100% pressure got to Yeah. Him. No, 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 no. I see Not nice to, 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 to cheer someone's failure, but at the same time, I couldn't hold it in. I was like, yeah, yeah, boy, yeah. But you know what? At the same time, if if you're in that guy's position, if you've, you know what I mean? If, if you've got... A soul of concrete. You know what you have to do to beat him. Oh, R- Reese had to lay down. He had to lay lay the smack of down early what? doors. Do you know he had to bang it so hard that he's like, now follow that bitch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I hope he said yeah. that to all five. Follow him. Follow that bitches. Do you know what I mean? And just went to shake hands and then slicked up the side of his hair. Yeah. Do you know that kind of was grand. And it was great. And he did. He laid, laid it down so hard that the next five couldn't come in with the last roar. And the last guy, the pressure got so much to him, he slipped him, slipped off the, the horse. Yeah, I'm terribly sorry. But like that's, you know, young, young, young Reese. he did the same thing four years ago in Tokyo. So, womp, womp, pal, try again in four years. Get a gold medal. Have your you own go. story. Regardless of which, Winners Tom, win, Jared. That's all I'm saying. Winners, winners win, win, okay? You can't argue with the fact that winners win, Tom. You cannot have a row with the fact that winners win. You just can't. True. It's undisputable. Uh... And with that being said, you may not have a row about that. Maybe there's something we can have a row about. My attitude is, don't start nothing. Won't be nothing. I think there is. the. I, it, it came to me and I, I messaged you about it because I've in a brief period of, uh, I suppose, freedom, I had to step back. There was plumbers gone in. I had to step back away from the house. So there was no work being done in the house for a couple of hours uh, yesterday. And we found ourselves going to a local car boot sale for the crack. Car boot from, sale. Go, go. Talk to me, Tom. For what? I don't know. But you know, you don't know what you want at the car boot sale. You want to be surprised. You might see something go, Jesus, look at that. That's a set of antlers from yes, the forest in Brittany. Let's get that for the house for the crack. And if nothing else, it can go in the old shade. Do you know, it'll look cool. These if I remember your house correctly, Tom, you, you badly needed more antlers, all right? <laughs> There's never enough antlers in your house. <laughs> There's not. And before anybody starts going, that's poor day, they drop off. They drop off. Yeah. You can go and find them. You go walking in the forest right now, you'll find them. You, you shoot a deer, they fall right off that pasture. That's the only thing. <laughs> you, yeah, you can go and get them yourself if you want. Right off the, <laughs> right off the head. But, but Tom, a car boot sale. So t- tell me about it now, okay? And we're going to get into car boot salary and the 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 goodness and, and, and merit of same because uh, it might surprise you, Tom, but I have thoughts on the matter. Okay. Uh, so I want to know the nature of the car boot sale you went to. Please. The it was it's 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 renowned. It's a monthly one, it's a renowned one. We went to it and I'm not gonna say where it was because my view on it was uh, unfortunately shite. I mean gone to the dogs. Like you're well, expecting Well talk to me, Tom now. You see, here's where I'm gonna come into it, okay? There's things that you couldn't drag me to, all right? Yeah, right enough. But there's things that I would love to go to. Yes, yeah. Okay? Yeah. And there's there's like a grey area here. When people say car boot sale, some people think, oh, uh, a market. Well, yeah, no, it's it's not. Technical. It's not that. No, it's not that. Uh, and, 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 you know, we, we got car boot sales, flea markets, we got jumble sales. We've got conventions. Like there's a whole myriad of of stuff that all comes together. Well, you're talking about pull up with your car boot full of stuff and open the bag of it and sell what's inside it. Well, right? that's what that's what it used to be. There was a wholesome vibe to that. But what this seemed to be was just 
one uh, vendor, like professional vendors now. And they were whether you know, I don't know from where they were from. You see that they, that 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 le- that that they had, things market to me though. It 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 kind of is, but they've done it in a shite way where it's just, and they just seem to be selling bootleg workwear. You know, they're selling shite these these you know toys that light up and spin. You know, straight out of some factory in the Chengcheng district. Do you know, it's I don't. I don't mind. These things should be sold at the theatre, should be sold at the circus. But I'm here for people's stuff from their boots. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to see, okay, I'm never going to buy those two porcelain dogs looking at each other on a mantelpiece, but I want to see them. I want to see yeah. those things like, do you know that's, what I mean? I don't want to that's see That's what I want vendors. from that as well. Yeah. Okay. I want your old stuff and I want to go in and say to myself, I don't know what I'm going to find. Now, yeah. this, is, this, is, this, is, this is one of these instances, Tom, where, and I hate to say it, this could be on you and me. You know what I mean? This could be our fault here. I hate to say it. Come on. Why is it our but, fault? If, if, if we're going to a market and we expect a car boot sale, but we get market, that's kind of on us. Because I know there are there are markets here in Dublin where it's like of a Sunday or whatnot, it'd be some venue will just throw open the doors to markets and people that would normally make and sell things on Etsy. Or, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, Past the jewellery. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Artists and things like this yes, that would yeah, make yeah. prints and whatnot would go to that market and sell the wares. That's that's a yeah. market, okay? Yeah. And if I want something for the house, if I want some trinketry for the walls or I want like a nice piece, I got a few pound ro- knocking around and we want something for the upstairs hall wall that just needs something on it. Yeah. That's where I go for that, right? Uh-huh. Okay. And there's another thing as well, which is uh, 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 conventions. I've been to a couple of these ones here where it might be like a comic convention or a gaming convention where hey, you go yeah. in to wander around yeah. and they're stalled there and people are selling, you know, again, art, music, things they've made, okay? Yeah. Or things they've had a hand in, in writing or a literary market where like, you, you know, the lad that wrote what and whatever book will be sitting there signing copies and, and, and hand them out to you. Okay? No, That's I have no fine. idea what you're talking about there, but anyway. You know, these these are all fine, okay? But when you tell me that there's a car boot sale, what I want is stuff being sold out of the boot of a car. Yeah. Not stuff that you bought on um, drop shipping, they call it, that you bought it real cheap. Yeah. And you shipped it over here and you're selling, you know, um, tat. No. I, and that's phone exact, cases and things yeah, like that. That was the rubbish that I was seeing. And I'm like, where are the drive shafts out of a 1984 BMW? Where are the tractor seats out of a Massey 35? Right. Where are, oh, oh, you've got, you know, the, the old AA signs, like, you know what I mean? These kind of things. Oh, class, you have, right, you've got a, a tower drill from the 30s that you're selling. Right. Mighty. And, 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 like, for, for me, I would go to it and it would be someone that was cleaning out the house and they put it all in the van and put it all in the car and talk to it. And you open a box and go, what's this? Oh, the gas and moved out of the house 20 years ago. He left that there. And it's like a new in-box Nintendo 64. Yeah. Or a new yeah. in-box PlayStation with 100 games for it. How much do you want for this? What have you on you? I have a 20 euro note. Yeah, go on. It'll do. Yeah. yeah. That's car boot. Okay. Don't, don't, don't bring me to a car boot sale and not have that. But at the same time, if you're advertising yourself as a market and I go expecting this, that might be on me. This was car boot sales. Is that fair, right? Yeah, 100%. I get it. Like, if it's a market and somebody has cheeses, we're fine. But I don't want to see no cheese at a car boot sale. Do you right. know what I mean? I want to see stuff. Oh, sure, you've got, okay, you've got an old weights. You know, an old set of weights. Nobody's going to buy them. But fair play to you for taking them out of the garage and bringing them in, you know, bringing them on your Volvo today to, to, to open up your boot. Like, I sold, I, I suppose, I... We years ago we did a small little car boot sale. We went to it myself and my brother, my parent. We made holly kind of wreaths. It was at right. Christmas, and that was the closest I can. But we made them at least. Do you know what I mean? But I think I think at the same time I think I sold some toys. I think I had some toys like old He Men and stuff like that, which I'm kind of raging. I sold like well, this is it too. But you you know you you got fifty pence for it or something. You're like, Fine. and also you you know you cleared out for more stuff coming like or whatever. But it was everywhere all along. It was a very well organized car boot sale, but quite literally, people pulled up with their Ford Escorts and yeah. popped the boot. 
and you might have you should have you know you'd have a bit of a table or you might be flogging it straight out of the boot and have a blanket on the ground it was and that's what it should from, be a- everything from like i said a set of antlers to uh you know a a, a i don't know a steer of skull that somebody brought back from Texas 30 years ago or whatever then you're you know and it's it's all this stuff yeah out. Tom or other things <laughs> or okay there was two kind of quite similar things those there, are just both skulls lad <laughs> uh, okay fair enough but you know like this is what you you want to see you want to see the tat because you know I did always laugh when people would bring on like broken shit you're like dude yeah take that to the dump Nobody's you know, take it. that to the dump. Like, but you, but then you know, there could be a part of it. Like, I, I remember there was a guy, the yoke he was holding things in. I remember, um, it was for a play that somebody was doing. They really wanted an old, uh, milk basket right. for carrying. And yes. the, this guy had a load of owl, China, you know, China plates and delf stacked up in yeah. this thing. And I remember the owl had gone, Oh, no, they needed this for a local play. He went, Do you? Can I? He said, I'll give you a box. I've got an orange box in the boot of the car. He says, Can yeah. I buy that off? He went, Ah, you want that? And then you said, Yeah, it's an actual milk crate. Like they would hold six bottles yeah. of milk. And he went, Ah, do you want any of the plates that are in it? He goes, No, I don't want any of that shit. I want the yoke that is in. Yeah. So he thought it, the guy didn't even think there was value in it, but he was delighted. He got like five pounds or whatever for, and you know, the 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 thing with a car boot sale, Tom, like it should be like done deal. In real life, that's exactly what it should be. Done deal in real life. Done deal should have their own, like a sponsored, their own sponsored car boot sales, and they only allow stuff life. in like that. No, no, nothing new, nothing new that you bought us, and you're now a vendor. No new shit that no, you bought no, as no, a vendor. No, if you, if you want to do that, you take it to a market, a hundred percent, a market stall, hundred percent. For example, like, and you know, and 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 if you think this is Tom and Jerry saying fuck markets, not the case. No, the market out at Hoth, for example, go you go out there. I could tell you what was in the market at Hoth and who was selling what because yeah. it's been the same people having the same market stalls by and large all the time. Yeah, and I wish them well in their in their business, but don't rock up with a car boot sale with that. No, like the very same. There's a small market on Friday Fridays in Tipperary Town, and for ever in a day, they've had. Huge amounts of, like I said, knockoff workwear, you know, Metallica t-shirts, the, the usual stuff, and a couple of more yeah. bits. But it's all new stuff that they bought somewhere. Yeah, but and if I there's want... lads, if if there's lads that are selling things that, um, perhaps how will we say this, Tom? They don't have receipts for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that shows up too. That's the only thing that like shows up as well. And I'm like, you know, okay, fair enough. You know. Everybody yeah. got to make a living as Jennifer Lopez once said. Here's the thing I want to talk about, Tom, right? Uh, and uh, we were talking about Camp Crystal Lake and Camp what have you back there. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and the, how the Irish versions of it don't translate. I haven't seen a very American thing and I would lie, I would very much like to see it, Tom. A yard sale. A classic American yeah. yard sale where you or they call it a garage sale as well, where you basically open your garage door and you want to sell in the house. You bring it out onto the lawn in front of you. Someone comes over, says, how much for the Ikea cabinet? 50 euro. Will you take 20? Yes, I just want it out of the house. Boom, gone. How much for that? How much for that? And you literally empty your house of whatever you don't want out onto the green. And it's, yeah, and people buy it. And whatever you're left with, you either dump it or give it to Goodwill or you give it to whatever. I haven't seen that in Ireland, have you? I have not, and I don't think you will see it with Irish people because I don't know if it's a privacy thing or a, or a begrudgery thing or maybe a shame thing or whatever where they're like, or is just Irish people being kind of, Ash, who'd buy my house? You know, who'd buy, who'd buy? I've seen kind, I have seen, like I've seen, I know a guy, he accidentally fell into the kind of antiques world by doing kind of something like that, he got left his 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 his, his granny's house, and he went, "Jesus, it's all antiques in here. I've no even time for this shit." But he kind of did a bit of research and went, "Oh, this is worth this." And he kind of did an open garage kind of man away yeah. and have a look, and made a fortune. I went, "Yeah, uh-huh. of course." Uh, and now, the same guy who's still very he's he's not far outside Dublin, but he's still very kind of era. It is what it is. He's not a, an antique dealer, but he kind of is by accident. We did a house clear out and it was a very much a, 
what's your one's name? That is she a Japanese woman? Mary. Oh, Mary, Mary Kondo. Kondo. Yeah. And she'll rock up and go, does this, does this give you a spark? Does this t-shirt give you a spark? And you're like, Era, it was fail in 94, Mary. Do you know? Yeah. We were, we were all sparking. But I think the spark is long gone out of it. I think she, <laughs> and her whole thing is, fuck it out. And yeah. what we did. I mean, here's, what, the, here's the thing, Tom. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to come off all that very well this episode whatsoever good, here. Yeah, I'm good, breaking, good, I'm good, breaking good. hearts and the Gale talked and then I'm, uh, Casting aspersions on the man's training practices uh, up north. Most of what I would like to see sold in a garage sale or car boot sale, people are just giving it to Oxfam, just yeah. giving it to charity. Yeah, and yeah. I I will go to an Oxfam, Tom. I do enjoy spending a lunch break like pootling around in an Oxfam or a or, or a. One- on hundred percent, I bought. I just get the feeling I would enjoy it more if it was a Sunday in a field. You're hundred percent right. With so we're dealing with somebody that if I didn't like the price, I could tell him to fuck away off. The best you one... don't you, you can't do that with the staff in Oxfam. No, you can't. Nor I... should you. You can't you be can't... like yeah, thirty quid for that. Yeah, well, yeah. Get them. Now, I mean, you could get into the whole debacle that you know it's a very. It's an incredible business to set up. We're a charity. You only need to give 4% to take to take the name of a charity. And you get the stuff for free. Just saying. Anyway, um, the we sold, we sold, sent all our stuff to auction. Sent all everything. Damn near everything, Jer, to auction as a as a Mary Kondo cleanse. Right. And I mean we lost our bollocks through you know, from the original purchase, but sure, of course you are. It's, stuff goes Oh well, yeah, no. But it was actually felt class. We're like, Jesus Christ, we're not moving that fucking big bastard of a table with it. But the best one I've ever seen, and this is going to rattle your cage, the best two I've ever seen. Over. England. They're by oh, Jesus, eh? they, they do them right. They I have do a feeling them right, the wood, Jared. yeah. We went to one not far from Stratford-upon-Avon. And, Ger, it's not a, it, it's, what would you call it? It's not antique. It is antique, but it's not antique. It's it's uh, you know, it's did they call it reclamation? What did they call it? Did they call it, like um, salvage? salvage you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. Architectural I and and design and uh, interior salvage. But they didn't just have all this turfed in a warehouse, perishing cold in the piss and the rain. You walk in there and it's cold inside, colder inside than it is outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you're going, Jesus Christ, sure, there's no price on anything inside this place. They had literally this gigantic warehouse on two floors and they had dioramas set up as to where these would work in your home. They actually had settings. Oh, like you, want, you want your house, yeah, you want your house to look like it's 1930s and Jerry is coming over the hill. This whole thing will be and you just go, lovely, oh great, there's a price on it. I'll go and negotiate. It was, they call them brocants in France. Do you know yes. what I mean? Where you, they have it set up right where you go, Hi, right, Jesus, we'll pool all this together and I'll give you half the fucking price that you're asking for it. And then we can spit in our hands and shake hands. And then we'll talk. And then we'll talk. Now, here's the other side. We don't have the history here to have stuff that long. Really, we don't. It's probably still in houses if it was around. Like, we don't have that level of architecture still now. We burnt most of the big architectural houses to the ground in the early part of the 1900s. So we didn't end up with an awful lot of that kind of stuff. But I went to a car boot sale, and by accident because it was in the grounds of the place we were staying they gave them their fucking due they gave them their due they had a whole furniture section and interior yes. section yes they had car parts section they had you know and it was it was just like done deal broken down into the categories and you could walk yeah. to each one and there was some good stuff there was some, you know headlights off a 1972 Mini Cooper like you know what I mean there was you know and it, it, like I was, it was killing me. I was like, "This is a car boot sale. This is a proper car boot sale." Like, so, in summary, ladies uh, and gentlemen of the Tom and Jerry audience, <laughs> car boot sales, we are for them. Stop 100%. calling markets car boot sales. Yes, but at the same time, I like a market. If I need something from a market, I go to a market for it. Exactly. The only Once... thing I would generally need from a market these days is to be fleeced for pick and mix. But here yeah, we are. Yeah, so, sourdough. That's normally what it where I end up there. Is sourdough. Right, that's a yeah. market, okay? And when we're here, we have car boot sales selling old shite uh, for a price that you more or less dictate. Yeah, that's where we want to be. 
That's, that's where we want to be. That's Never. where we want to be. And that's where we want you to be, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to come with us on this journey, hey, you're with us this long, you may as well come on another wee bit. You can follow me and Tom at Tom and Jerry Show on Twitter and Instagram. We'll get us or at Jerry McBride will get me at Tom underscore O'Mahony. We'll get him on Twitter or Instagram. Hey, free bullshit. Who doesn't want it, right? Go have a gander. Go have a gander. Listen, if it's your first time listening or if you've listened a few times and for some reason you've just gone searching for it and you haven't hit subscribe, whatever platform you're listening to, hit subscribe. Hit the bell as well if there is, whatever it is, if it's a cowbell, if it's a hooter, if it's a star or whatever, hit that so that you know it lands in your phone every single Thursday. And if you have the ability to rate, I most of them have them at this stage, give it the top rate and it just helps more people find it. You know what I mean? Let us know where you're listening. Screen grab. And if you do, you do. Like Jerry said, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on, on Twitter. And let us know you're listening. And let us know your opinions on the, the three items that we've been talking about this evening. We had, of course, um, up front, we had the, the summer camps one. How Did you go to summer camp? If, you, if you're if you not even from Ireland, did you go to summer camp? Did you go to did the Did you go to a proper summer camp? What was the making? Was it the making of you? Was it the was it the making? Did it serve its purpose? Or did you just, just come back more traumatized than before you left? Did yeah. you? What is what more of the first kind of stories, please? Er, yeah, we you, you've gotten the vibe from us at this stage. Yeah, we're not your therapist, <laughs> like yeah. pommel horses, barely our own here, like pommel horses or odd sports that you did in school that other schools didn't do, or one that always intrigued you that you never gave a go to. Are you an Olympian? Have you been to the Olympics? Let us know in the comments. Do we have any Olympians listening to us? Did you place sixth in the laser radial in Barcelona? Let us know. Odds of car boot sales. Your thoughts. What have you ever bought it in class? Did you ever, hey, are you a car boot sailor? Do you do it yourself on a regular basis? If you do, let us know. We know I'm, I desperately, I'm getting, I think I'm going to get back into going to car boot sales and try and find the best one around Ireland there. If, you know, if, if, if anybody's listening to this, it should be apparent that we know very little about what we're talking about. So oh, God, we need yeah. you people to help us out every now and then. Yeah, no, this isn't just throwing it out there just to make you feel involved. No, no, uh, help us, please. Yes. We're, <laughs> we're only really, we're circling the edge here, lads. This Lord is knows we're struggling. This is uh, Other than that, wonderful stuff. Lovely to have you along. We recorded this on a bank holiday Monday, so you're welcome. A hundred percent you're welcome. There's a packet of crisps inside with my name on them. <laughs> and I, I just can't stop thinking about them for the last 10 minutes, to be honest with you. Go on, take care, everybody. Look.